So if you remember the Race With Me series, I had people sign up for cars in an offline league and I ended up racing against them to try and beat them. Well, uh, in my mind, that series got too drawn out and uh, it was kind of difficult for me to use because I was using the same tracks as the ones that I use for my NR leagues. So at some points when I have to modify the tracks to keep the AI from absolutely killing me, uh, that would uh, I would have to make separate files for everything and I have to remember which files were which, get them in for the league if I had a, a race there at that track at some point and it was a complete mess and at some points confusing for me uh, to try and remember what was what. So I ended up scrapping that, it is over, it is officially over, but I've brought in another thing because I love racing in NR so much and this is what I'm going to call my NR2003 career mode in quotation marks. Obviously. Uh, NR does not have a career mode, it has a championship mode with seasons, da 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 Well, I'm going to be using the 2003 NASCAR Cup Series schedule with the 2003 tracks, so I don't have to switch the INIs up, I can just keep the INIs for the 2003 track and the INIs for my league track. Basically, what I'm going to do is I am in a startup team, rut racing, the number A6 right here, as you can see it's Fred Jones's car that comes with the pack. Uh, I will be driving for my own team, my startup team. In this world, I have a quote-unquote technical alliance with DEI, the number 15, the number 8, and the number 1, uh, and I'm going to be racing a career. This could possibly go multiple seasons, and I could possibly start using the different car sets for the different seasons. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm going to be racing uh, in NR because I enjoy it so much. Uh, just not going to have people sign up for it. Uh, it's just for the uh, viewing pleasure of you guys. And I can hope I hope that uh, I can do this whole season and uh, continue to do more seasons in the future. So uh, here at Daytona for the 520 laps of action, uh, we're going to see some three wide racing at points. Dale Earnhardt Jr., my technical teammate, got the pole for this race. Tony Stewart is going to be second. Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Jeff Green are the top five, with Robbie Gordon, Michael Walter, Junior Johnson, Matt Kenseth, and myself rounding out the top ten. Another thing I did. Uh, with the with the uh, car ratings, I just kept them the same as when they came with the game. So that's why you see drivers like Dale Jr., Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, and you know Jeff Gordon. They're always going to be at the front of these races because they, of course, have the better ratings because that's how they were in real life. And then you'll see drivers like Mike Skinner, Boris Said, Joe Nemechek, Jack Sprague. They're going to be down towards the bottom because of, uh, you know, the, the, they were like that in real life. They were kind of underfunded. They were towards the back. But at some point, you will see them try and make their way forward, like maybe at a short track, someone will do better. Maybe here at Daytona, we'll see some drivers break their way inside the top 10, inside the top 5. Uh, so I qualified 10th. That's not the ideal position for me. I really want to be on the bottom lane here. I don't really like being on the outside. So hopefully I get a good enough restart and get down to the bottom. But uh, without further ado, uh, let's click drive, go down track side, get the command, and hope and pray everything goes right. So the command has just been given for my first ever NR2003 career mode race. So once again, with my startup team of Rut Racing, just started up this season, we're going to technically be calling this 2003. Uh, and also the uh, Spire Pack I'm using is the Jimmy Johnson Spire Pack once again with Chad Canals as the crew chief and I think it was Chris Osborne at this point was his uh, spotter. So that's what I'm going to be using and it's, it's ironic that Jimmy Johnson is starting in front of me uh, because uh, I've just stolen his crew chief and spotter apparently. But um, yeah, 20 laps here at Daytona. All the test races I did were 10 laps long and I've noticed I was very impatient during those. So I have no doubt that I'll probably be impatient during this one as well. But uh, let's hope that I've kind of fixed that because I am an impatient person at points. So starting 10th on the outside, let's see if I can get down to the bottom here on the start. Coming to the green in my first ever race, the Daytona 500. It's bumpy, so it's going to be crazy. Here we go to the restart zone, and I'm racing at Daytona in 2003. Okay, I don't know where that came from, but I'll take it. Starting on the outside was apparently good because I just got to the lead. I powered through everyone and got to the lead. Okay, that's the corner. I almost went high because I thought we were still on the straightaway. 
But now the hard thing is going to be protecting this lead because they can actually make some good moves. They can make some good moves on you if they know that you're slower. And it's not like they're on any easy percentage either. I mean, I mean, it could be easy for some people, but I think it's on, I used the auto, so I did a few test races. It could be higher if I did more test races. I did like two test races. It put at 95 or 96 percent, so that's what I'm racing as. That's what I'm going to do for every uh, every race. It'll be on an auto percentage. That's basically where the uh, the AI it kind of judges uh, what strength the AI need to be on for you. You saw right there to turn one. Kurt Busch tried to make a move on me and it failed, uh, but I had to block that off. Uh, before it did make a move and work. Here comes Michael Walter, my technical teammate, quotation marks, to the bottom. Trying to get to Jeff Green. So I led lap number one in my career. That's kind of special. I'm going to try to come around and lead lap number two of my career. But, uh, hopefully I can just control the tempo of this race, not get shuffled out. I have a feeling that at some point though, I'm going to get shuffled out. At some point... It's going to be hard to block. There's going to be like multiple lanes coming or something. Or someone's going to have two. Or that will happen. I got up the racetrack. I think it was because of a bump. And uh, that's going to cost me right there. The Roush boys are coming on the inside. The 17 and the 99. Kenseth slides up. Let's see if I can get in his draft and try and pull myself forward with him. That's going to be a negative there. I'll just stay in line with him. I have... You also hear me start to feather the throttle at points, and that's because I sometimes get too close to them. Some okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm clear, yeah. But uh, at some points, I get too close to them in the corners. I noticed that in testing, I would get too close in the corners. And I would really kind of like. I would get hooked together with them and wreck everyone. It would be horrible, wreck myself. So uh, I, I try to kind of let off going into the corner so I'm behind someone just so that I don't end up turning them and myself and making a whole mess. But those front four, they got single file, they're pulling away, and the Newman made a move. So that's going to bring me right to them because they're side by side. Look at the run I have. Poor Steve Park got shoveled out. I love that one scheme. It was probably my favorite DEI scheme, that just yellow pendulum number one. It's my favorite out of those DEI cards. All the, all the DEI cards have really nice paint schemes. Uh, during this era. I don't know what it is, just that base color with the lines. It was sweet. Wow, Park, that was an aggressive block. Jesus. I like how my Spider didn't call outside until it was halfway beside him. <laughs> okay. Still there. Jesus, Park, he's putting up a fight. Oh my god, I think he pulled me. I think he's getting that draft off Tony Stewart. All right, that's the thing I was talking about. I'll gain on them through the corners. And if I get hooked together with them, which I did. Okay, I saved it, but I slowed a ton. Check the bottom. Okay, I think Sadler was down there, and I just come off, and we make contact, I think. That was close. Um, I'll let them go around the outside of me if they, if they have the run. Like Jeff Gordon, if he can get around the outside of me, I can hook up with them. But right now, those front four, they really pulled away because of that. That's the thing I was talking about. I would gain so well in the, like, into the corner for some reason that like I would hook them sometimes. And that just happened right there. I couldn't let off enough. That drafters just pulled me forward. And now we have some ways to go if we want to get caught up. Hopefully I can lead this train up to them. I'm trying to look at the distance. 0.9. It's not really changing. Hopefully through the corners. And that means side by side is going to help too. It's going to slow them all down. So. So I pulled away from Sadler a little bit here. Maybe I'm getting some draft off of them as well. Maybe that's why. Right now I'm not really gaining on Park though, and that's the bad thing. All right, now I just did because he got side by side with Newman. If they can stay side by side there, I'm closing in because of it. Oh my God, where that? How do you get that? I need to look at my mirror more. I'm not looking at my mirror enough, and Sadler ended up getting a huge run. Newman. All right, so we close right back in because they got side by side, which was good. So uh, we'll be in their draft now. We'll get to them uh, coming off turn four. And we'll be good. We can start to try and make moves through the field again. That was close there with Stewart. We about almost wrecked. You can, see, you can see the tire marks. I don't know if that's from me or Stewart, but you can see the tire marks through three and four. Oh, Park! We're going to make a move on Stewart for a second. 
Steve Park's tired of being the third party and the the third wheel in the DEI uh, days. It always seemed like it was Michael Waltrip and Dale Jr. that I'd be working together, and Steve Park would be crashed or mid pack in those plate races. All right. Stewart. I thought he was going to try and come down, make a crossover. On Look at the lead that Jeff Burton got because they were side by side. Look at the run I got. I'm going to get to second here. Jesus, I'm getting loose. I think it's because of the bumps. It just feels like I'm about to spin out the rear of my car, which isn't good. <laughs> you don't want a loose car at Daytona. Normally at Daytona, you want a tight car. So they keep it held on the bottom lane or keep it held in the lane. Especially if you're running in a pack. Checking out sometimes when you're in a second says, go get that son of a bitch. I was hoping he was going to say it again, but... I keep getting that apron. I want to stay as close as I can to the yellow line, but I keep getting too low. Man, Sadler's been all over me these past, like, five laps. I don't even know if we completed five laps, but he's been all over me for the longest time. Got another round of Burton here through three and four. So we got one of the NBC boys at the front. <laughs> Who would have thought that back in 2003, Jeff Burton and Dale Jr. would be commentating for NBC? Got to his inside. Do I have the help? Jeff Gordon's in third. How about, all right, so at the front we got NBC, Fox, and NBC because Dale Jr. is also up here. We got three commentators. Who would have thought that any of these three would be commentating races in 2018? That's crazy. How times have changed. In 2003, I think Dale Jr. is more like, um, I don't like cameras. I don't like people. All right, Gordon's getting a run. Block him down to that yellow line. How about that? The NBC boys. I think they're getting side by side. All right, now my plan is just to try and protect this lead again. Like I said earlier in the race, just try to protect the lead. Although, uh, when I said that, I went wide and one and two, so... So my spire should tell me when we're halfway and when there's 10 to go. Okay, yep, there it is, 10 to go. So then he'll tell me when there's five to go and when there's two to go. So that'll be good. So we're halfway through the race. Once again, up the racetrack, I don't know if Gordon's to my inside. I guess he's not because then spire would have said something and I would have gotten clipped right there, but <laughs> just wanted to make sure, kind of protect that bottom lane. Kind of all over the racetrack. I keep looking at my mirror. I keep trying to tell where that 24 is going. I don't know if he's going high or low. If he's just staying in line. It's like right there. I, wa I want to be like this through every corner. Just down that yellow line. Making sure no one gets... They can see the bumps right there. How... Like j just the bumps that they were facing in 2003. And the track was so bumpy even in like, you know, 2010. Like imagine in 2010, the year before they repaved it, how bumpy it is if it's this bumpy in 2003. Is that Brett Bodine? Holy crap, Brett. How's your racetrack? All right, so now we got pace car driver up inside the top three. How's your racetrack look to you, Brett? Track's good talent. We will be one to go when we get here. Oh, man. I'm trying to win my first career race, the Daytona 500. But I got the whole pack behind me. Is that Bill Elliott? I think it is. Yeah, it is. Bill Elliott. I went wide. I had that bomb open for a split second, but no one took it. Which was lucky by me. Oh, my, my right hand is getting sore because of how I'm holding the wheel. Am I gripping it? Shouldn't be gripping it. Why am I gripping it? <laughs> it's not even that big of a deal. There's my skid marks again. <laughs> is that Kurt coming to the bomb again? It is. I keep trying to look at the leaderboard to see who's behind me and taking my, my eyes off the road. And It's not good, man. It's not good. I went a little wide again, but I think if I leave half a lane open, they probably won't take it. I say probably. 
until I get spun out. Then they will take it. <laughs> I think Jimmy Spencer's coming up. I think I just saw the seven. It is Jimmy Spencer. I can see him on the leaderboard. Man, Jimmy Spencer could get a top ten out of this day. Remember I said that there are going to be drivers that are at the back. Jimmy Spencer's one of them. But a track like Bristol or Martinsville or Daytona or Talladega, they will start to come up towards the front. Because once again, each car has its own like separate track type rating. This is Super Speedway, so it's going to have a different rating than when we go to the Speedway or an Intermediate. Are we at five to go yet? He has to be down there. there there's no way. Okay, he's not apparently. Holy crap. Doing a lot better than I did earlier in the race out front. Oh, Kerry Earnhardt. He's either on pit road or off pace. He's 24 seconds back. He may have lost a draft, honestly. As he's one of those underfunded cars, so Kerry Earnhardt may have lost a draft, actually. Because I don't think he would I think if he was on pit road, he would have been a lot closer to us. Five to go. All right, final five laps of the 500. Trying to hold off Kurt Busch, Rusty Wallace, and the whole pack. Dale Jr. is coming back forward. I think finally the Bonnie I saw on the leaderboard. Oh my gosh, this is nuts. I don't think we'll catch Kerry either. He's 22 seconds up. We have five laps. We have to catch him at about four, four and a half seconds a lap about. So uh, I don't think that's happening at all. Catch him at about a second a lap, maybe two seconds a lap. But we'll get, we won't get, you know, there. Jesus. Four to go. Here comes Junebug. Oh, I got up the racetrack again, but Junior couldn't take advantage. My neck is getting stiff. Lord, I think we're coming to three to go now. Yeah, carries 18 seconds up. So, takes six seconds a lap to catch him. Here's a good job of holding second right now, though. Man, I almost opened the bomb again. If I go just a little bit wider through one of these corners, it might be game over. Because we're coming to late in the race. If I get shuffled high, I don't know if I would have enough time to get to back down low and make a charge. I think we're coming to two to go right here. Jeff Burton coming on the outside. The NBC boys back at it. Burton got to run the outside. He's outside of me. And Junior fell off my bumper. But I'm clear again is good. I'm just protecting this bottom. I don't care if Burton gets around me on the top side. If he does, that's good for him. We're coming to the white flag. He actually is ahead of me. He might clear me. Jeff Burton is clear of me. Now hop down from me, get me the draft, and I can try and get back around him. That's my only shot. Burton used the outside. Now they're back outside me. Johnny Benson to my outside. I think Jeff Burton's going to win. Look how far ahead he is. He's so strong. Get another run on him, though. I have to get clear through three and four and try and make a move. 
off four. I don't know if I have enough of a run to do so. Yeah, I think Jeff Burns is going to win the 500. 2003 500. God damn. The outside. How about that? He was strong. I, even like in his draft there, down the back, we couldn't catch him. Man, Jeff Burton's strong. Man. God dang, Jeff. Good for you, though, man. You earned it. Using the outside. I want to get up there and bump him, but half the time when I try and congratulatory bump people, it ends up going awry, so... See if I can just give him a nice little bump on the back. Let's wait until the corner's over. Hey, Jeff, congratulations, buddy. Good job. Ooh, I forgot that. I just blew a tire. <laughs> oh, man. Yep, I'm coming in. I need to find my way down to the bottom of pit road. Kurt! Jesus. Can't, can't tear up this car if I didn't tear it up. Why was Kurt coming down to the bottom? Oh, there's mine. I was about to say, where's mine? There it is. Right next to, uh, Burton's. Oh, my Lord! I don't know what just happened there, but something happened. Let's just back up into our pit stall. Like, good boy. I don't care if I'm too far right. I can just get out of the car. I want to see what Jeff Burton did there to make that move work, because he... All right, so here we are. No real threat here with two to go. In fact, it was actually pretty good on the inside. The outside didn't really have any, any help. I should have at one point gone up to block the outside. Right here on the back stretch, I probably should have. Yeah, right there, if I would have jumped up, maybe it would have helped. But I was like, I'm too committed to this inside. Right there, he got the run. I don't know how he got that run. Dang. And he was just going 190, and then I cleared him again through 3 and 4, so... Right there, I cleared him, but then he got back to my outside. Right there as I got into the apron, he got back to my outside, I think. And coming off turn four, yeah, he got a great launch. It may have been something with the tires, honestly, and the grip. Later in a run. But yeah. And then he got clear me into turn one. I thought I would have had another shot, but the I think the outside started to come in there late, honestly. I think the outside started to be the place to be, because look at Benson started to get the run on the top side, too. He actually got ahead of me at some point. And then he stayed side by side with me down the backstretch. So that's really what kept me from trying to gain on Jeff Burton. If we would have gotten single file, maybe we would have had a shot. But since we were side by side, no one was catching him. And I'm lucky I even held on to second at this point. Once again, I think maybe getting that apron there as well maybe hurt me. But yeah, man, that was hard, yeah, hard fought for Burton. Barely blocked Junior there. Yeah, Burton won. How about that? Let's look at the finishing results. Burton wins. I got second. Junior third. Benson, Green, Jarrett, Craven, Wallace, Elliott, and Skinner in the top ten. Right, looking down here. Karen Hart did lose the draft. 39 seconds back of the leader. And uh, there's Wallace, Sadler, all these people. So, yeah, that was a... Uh, that was a wild 500. Congrats to Jeff Burton. And since I am tied for the points, that means I got the most laps led. Yeah, I got 11. Burton got 9. So we were actually the only two drivers to lead the 500. And we are right now tied for the points lead. So uh, pretty cool. I got a top 5. Tied for the points. They would have wanted to win, obviously. But uh, hey, that will come to us. Uh, but yeah, the points are pretty much the same since we were the only two to lead laps. It's just how people finished. So, uh... First race of my career is over. Hopefully I can keep doing this. We go to The Rock next for the Subway 400. So North Carolina, that's going to be a hard racetrack to learn. That's a, uh, a different racetrack for sure. So I'll see you guys for that video.